So I haven't used this since 2013. Today is Sunday, October 24th, 2021. I'd like to do a review on the status of my Ansco SpeedX F4.5 camera. I've been patching the bellows and I haven't used this camera for about eight years, but I did use it and I got some pictures out of it. This is a roll of film I shot with that camera. And while I was waiting for tools to come so I could work on the Kodak Reflex 1A, I messed around with this one. This is a 6x6 camera, and I like that format because all the negatives on one roll fit on one page, and that's scanned completely on my scanner, and none of the pictures are cropped off sticking out over the edges. So that's why I like the 6x6 format, and this is the only 6x6 camera that I have that still works. The lens goes from f4.5 to f32. It is not the one that's in the book. The book has a better, it's a Prontor. This is the front lens looking from the rear. There's a blob of dirt in it at the top. Now the opening to the iris doesn't come near that, so it's really not a problem. This is the focusing ring on the front of the camera. It goes to 30 this way. It doesn't go to infinity. It's very loose. It goes to 3. 3 to 30. It does not go to infinity. When I put ground glass on the back, open the lens using bulb. I could not see a difference in the focus from near to far, focus close or far away. Everything kind of far away stayed in focus and nothing close ever did. See these are very close and they're out of focus. This one's out of focus. I was much further away from this bush and you can see everything is in focus. So, you know, from 10 feet or so away, everything's good. This was eight years ago that I took this. I've been patching the pinholes in this camera. I open the back, open the front, I shine the light inside with the lights turned off. I think I see one right here. But th definitely one right here. And I'll have a look and then I'll patch it. This is acrylic paint. It's water soluble and it dries pretty quickly. So I put some on the end of the brush. But I dab it all over this part. And what I do is I try to push it into the holes. Painting. The end of the Q-tip has been wet, and what I do is I mop up the excess. That prevents the billows from becoming too thick. 
with accumulated paint. Hopefully. And only the paint that went into the pinholes will remain. Okay, this, this is dry. So now I get the flashlight, shine it through again, try to find a hole, and do the same thing. My technique for patching the billows has changed. I use a cotton swab, I put it in the end of the paint tube and I get some paint on it. And then I choose one of the folds and I apply paint, I mash it into the bottom and I rub it on the top. I might do two or three of them at a time, do the edges, but then I take the other side that's clean and then I wipe all the paint off. I'm not leaving a layer of paint on, I want to squeeze paint into holes. So I do this numerous times and let the billows dry in between. This way the billows could be collapsed. There. The billows could be collapsed and they'll spring open and hopefully there won't be any light leaks. So this is a lot easier than using a brush. I don't use, I'm not going to use a brush anymore. I'm just going to use these. I'll smear the paint. I could smash it better with the Q-tip and I could push it into crevices better. And then with the dry Q-tip, a clean one, I could wipe off all that excess. Then when this dries and gets hard, I can close the billows and open it up and hopefully there won't be any holes. I had previously patched this billows and I used that uh, liquid electrical tape. It was much too thick. It glued itself to the, the billows were glued together so that it took a long time for it to actually expand and open up again. And then there were still holes. It didn't work, it really work. So if you want to get more of the, the paint off, I mean, you could use a damp Q-tip, but this paint is drying so fast and you can wipe it off and it's so thin, there's hardly any reason to do it. But it could be wiped with a water dampened Q-tip and that would clean off a little of the surface where it accumulates. Now my idea was to use oil paint, Mars black oil paint, and do the same thing, pushing it into all the holes and crevices, then wipe it off, and then you could use paint thinner. The, the acrylic dries very quickly, and it turns into a plastic when it does. And then even with the water, you can't really get it off. But with paint thinner, you can get oil paint off. It takes hours for it to oxidize and it doesn't dry, it oxidizes. The oil gets hard but with the interaction with oxygen. So the paint that would be stuffed into the holes would stay there and you gently wipe off the surface using turpentine, not turpentine, but mineral spirits, just dampen very carefully. The surface of the bellows then would not build up a layer of paint on it. You could wipe it off. That would be even better. But this is just a quick and dirty method to uh, find something that works. And this has been working. This has been working. It's not accumulating much. I'm able to close the thing and open it. It's not sticking to itself. And uh, that, that's a very economical and easy way to patch up holes in cameras to try out the different features of it. Very interesting on this camera, 
it has a, the time mode right here. This little lever goes up and down. I don't know if you could see that. There's a T right there. And then you push this lever up. And the red line goes to where the dot is. And you, or you could push it down. So I have the shutter set on B. So I push it up to T. And then I click the shutter. And it stays open. Until you push that lever back down. And then that closes it. So you cough the shutter, move that up, trip the shutter, this is the shutter. I don't think there's another trigger on it. Now, this is how you fire the shutter, you, you pull this. So B, now the lens is wide open, and to stop it you push this down. There is no T on the lens, there's only a B. So you have to set it on the B first. So the 25th works. The 50th works faster. The 200 works even faster. But that's all right. This will take pictures of anything like uh, 10 feet or more away, preferably like 15 feet or so. It seems to be set on the, the red dot 30 permanently. Can't really focus it. I can't focus it. And I have not tried to take it apart. I have a set of jeweler's screwdrivers, very, very tiny. I have magnifying illuminated headset, and I haven't tried them yet. There are three screws holding this ring on to the lens. The lens actually rotates. I can see that dirt blob turn round and round, but I can't see it moving in or out. Doesn't seem to thread a bigger gap. Well, it does actually make a bigger gap, but it doesn't make any difference when you look through the back. So I really don't know what to do about it, or if I should do anything about it. Like I say, it could take pictures that are far away. If I want to take uh, six by six pictures, and they they came out pretty nice, you know, the ones that are farther away. Closer ones are blurry, but because of all that, I never did anything more with this camera. I'm wondering if I took this off, if I could get the get at that dirt blob. But why doesn't it focus? I don't understand that. Maybe somebody could explain that to me.